So let's talk about maximum antenna gain. And I really want to have the max. It's important to me because I want that punching power. I want to take my transmissions or take that beacon and I want to make sure that even the hotspots that are in brick houses in the basement can see it, can witness it. I also want to make sure that those weak signals of people who are using the default antennas, that I'll be able to see it. And to me, that means I want the max antenna gain possible. Now, some of you, you your concern is that the higher the antenna gain, uh, the smaller the beam width, right? You don't want that angle of the beam width to be, I don't know, under 20. I'm not really sure what you go for, or what you figure it should be, but... Um, I'm not worried about that. We can talk about it if you want, but I'm not worried about it. I want the punching power. So here's the thing. We are now in that proof of coverage version 11 era. And as part of this era, what it means is that we need to tell Helium what our antenna gain is. The reason why is because Helium needs to adhere with the rules and regulations of the countries that the Helium hotspots are in. And so if you are not within those rules and regulations, they may bring down your power. In fact, my guess is Helium can probably verify to some degree whether or not you are matching these by taking a look at what you claim your DBI is and then looking at your witnesses. In other words, when you beacon, who witnesses and whether they see uh, power stronger than it should be. I don't know. Maybe it can't. Maybe it can. Let's hope they can't. But assuming they can, we want to stay within those regulations. So let's talk about those regulations in the United States. Now, in the United States, the maximum DBM you can have, or TX, meaning transmission power, TX power, is 27 dBm or 500 milliwatts. Now, I don't know the math on all of this, but I have a lovely chart to show you. And in this chart, it shows you that based off of that fact, 27 dBm, which is 500 milliwatts, converted with the fact that the maximum EIRP power allowed in the United States is 36 dBm or about four watts, that means the max antenna gain is 9 dBi. Now, I've said this in the past, 9 dBi. I do recommend an 8 dBi omnidirectional antenna by Rack, but that's because I actually trust the brand. But maybe I shouldn't, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But point being is we want to get as close to 9 dBi as possible. Now, what happens if we go above it? Let's say instead of having a 9 dBi antenna, we have a 12 dBi antenna. Well, as shown by the chart, um, helium is going to take your power and bring it down from 500 uh, milliwatts to 250 milliwatts or 24 dBm. So you don't want that, right? We want to try to adhere to this as much as possible. Um, one thing you want to consider then, if you are going with a higher DBI antenna, is consider your losses. So losses occur from a lightning arrestor, let's say, or your cable. Now, one example I have is my own interest. Yes, I have gone out. I have bought a 10 DBI antenna, and I got this 10 DBI antenna from Rockland. Rockland has the 10 dBi Rockland Backcountry Rural Omni Outdoor Helium 915 megahertz antenna, which is 45 inches long. And for those who care, it also states here that it is a 16 degree vertical beam width. I'm not worried about that, but some of you want to consider that if you're worried it's not going to hit the places you want it to hit. Okay, but moving forward, it's a 10 dBi antenna, so it just has about 1 dBm more than I want it to have. But that's okay, because I'm probably going to take something like this and put it as high up as possible, most likely in my, well, I'm going to say attic, but hopefully on the roof. Let's say it's in the attic and I just wanted to sit on the stand. Uh, then I would probably use something like 
It's uh, official rack wireless, heavy duty, uh, 3.5 diameter antenna magnet base with two meters of CDF 200 cable. Oh, okay, you got cable on it. What does that mean? Well, this cable, as it states here, I'm just gonna read it. Cheap entry-level magnetic docking bases for antennas typically have cables without shielding, giving you as much as 1.4 dB of gain loss over the same length cable. Our thick shielded CFD200 cable limits gain loss to just 0.6 dB for 915 megahertz, helping you preserve your antenna gain. All right, so we can assume then that our antenna is about 9.4 dBi. Eh, 9.4, I mean, I'd rather be right at 9, but I think if you listed it as a 9 dBi antenna, you might be able to get away with that. Now, on the other hand, let's say you're putting it on the roof. If you're putting it on the roof, there's two things you can consider. First of all, you're probably gonna add a lightning arrestor this lightning arrestor right here. If I look again from Rockland, it says when calculating dB loss, you may enter 0.5 dB as the loss from this lightning arrestor, 0.5 dB. So I have a 10 dBi antenna, 0.5 dB. Well, I have about 0.5 dB uh, left to work with. And what I use, I'm gonna use this RF portal to look at it in terms of LMR 400 cable. Now, as many of you know, LMR 400 cable will probably have the least amount of loss of any cable possible. And if I set it to, I'm gonna do it for a frequency of 904, and I'm gonna tell you why in a second. And if we do a cable length of, let's say, 25 feet, because that'll definitely go from the, the, uh, the roof to the ground level for you to be able to open up the uh, box that is holding your helium hotspot miner. That's gonna give me a 0.97 dB loss. A little too much. Let's try 15. All right, 0.58. That's pretty good. So we got 0.58, almost 0.6. Um, we also have the arrestor, which is about 0.5. So we can assume, again, if we're using a LMR cable of uh, 15 feet and a lightning arrestor, uh, we are working with a 9 dBi antenna. So point being is when entering what you need to enter in the Helium app, I would enter 9 in this case. Even though we have a 10 dBi antenna, we also have to consider the 1 dBm loss, which brings it down to a 9 dBi antenna. Now, two things. Uh, one, I, you see that I'm looking at a frequency of 904, not uh, 915 or 930. And the reason for that is when I look online on explorer.helium.com at my beacons and I look at my witnesses, I can see that the frequency here in the United States that I'm going off of is 904.3. And I mean, I can scroll through and check any of these and see it's getting that close, 904.7. It might be like 903.9, but it's it's hanging out around that 904, 905 area. So I like to use that as a reference point. Now, here is where I get mad at Rock Wireless. So I have always recommended the 8 dBi antenna. And yes, like I said, I like 9 dBi, but I am stuck with eight, because that's what it says here, and that was the highest that was possible from Rack Wireless, and I want a brand that I can trust. Now, here's the part that frustrates me. Um, I don't know if I can really trust this brand, and, and I can't trust them because they actually gave me more information that made me feel like I could trust them less. And that is that if I look in the peak gain and efficiency information for their eight dBi antenna, it shows that at the frequency at 905, my gain is 6.6. .6. So I'm really dealing with a 6.6 .6 antenna, right? Okay, now many of you had also said to me, oh, well, you know, you should do a 5.8 anyway, because a 5.8 uh, has, again, a bigger angle. But looking at their 5.8 antenna at the same area around, like this case, 904, it is a 5.6 antenna. So 
I am guessing that that angle you concern yourself with between 5.6 and 6.6 .6 is not a huge difference. I'm sure the radiation patterns honestly look great. Now this only shows me it at 900, not even 905, but at least I'm closer here than I am here. Anyway, point being is I would rather have something that is closer to nine, but and, and eight apparently isn't because it's 6.6. .6. Ah, that's really frustrating, but I still recommend it to you guys. And that being said, now then I go to Rockland. I don't know if this 10 dBi antenna is really a 10 dBi antenna. How can I tell? I don't trust it. Um, also, I look at this 9 dBi heavy duty flat panel antenna, which I've been using upstairs. How can I trust it? Now, that being said, I see that they're probably referencing this at 900 megahertz. So that's closer to 905. Um, the Rockland is being measured at 915 megahertz. I mean, that's my guess, but I don't know. I really want the actual data. I wish somebody would give me the actual data. Um, it's very frustrating, but point being, guys, is we should have that data. We should be able to utilize this kind of information to put the right number in to say, okay, yes, I have a 9 dBi antenna, but I have a 9 dBi antenna because it's actually 11 dBi with 2 dBm of loss or something to that effect. So I hope this helps you in figuring out what number you're going to put into the Helium app as well as how you can configure your antenna with your lightning arresters or your, um, well, your magnetic bases with six feet of cable. And if anybody can tell me how much loss is in the pigtails that come with a rack wireless antenna, and this is about one meter long, I would love to know. So please put it in the comments if you know. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to know more information like this. Otherwise, happy mining.